Hinut Dewana Nyungyut. My name is Nick Kobosuk. Um, came out here to help protect and defend and stand with the people of Tainanega. I'm from uh, Akwazasne. Live on uh, Gawanoge. And this is Mohawk territory. That's Mohawk territory. And they needed help, so it's my responsibility to come and help. All right, well, I mean, yeah, I'll break it down. I was asleep. They woke me up because they said the police had come. Um, I woke up, put my boots on, went out, and they were lining up and uh, gave us their intimidation, you know, their warnings or whatever. And then they slowly moved in on us. We just kind of stood there and tried to stand our ground, but they moved in on us and uh, picked off stragglers. They kept reaching and grabbing for us and trying to snatch us in. It was mostly, I wouldn't say peaceful, but it was nonviolent. And then uh, until the point where the line started to break, when they broke in and they had taken probably three or four, maybe five. And uh, we went from 13, I believe, 13 or 14 people down to nine or 10, something like that. Um, at that point, they just kept pushing on us. And they would push, try to grab, we would try to keep them from grabbing us, and we would try to grab our brothers and yank them back so they didn't take them. And then uh, when we would do that, they would move forward. And so that's how they advanced and took sometimes took a couple of us. Um, it got to the point where there was, like I said, only eight or nine of us. Um, and then it kind of stalled there for a second because that's when the media kind of caught up. And that's when... Uh, it kind of became a talking thing. For some reason, we paused for a few minutes. And when we paused for a few minutes, it was time for some of the boys to make jokes, try to show them the human side of what happened, um, it's the human side of who we were. Uh, that didn't quite last long. They started getting, um, you could tell, they were turning, they were changing their posture. They were talking in their earpieces, and you could see the way that they were moving, that, you know, it was, it was, getting to be time that they were kind of ready to end it. Um, I had said a few words and uh, that changed the tone of things. It, uh, you could see the, again, you can see the human side of them come out. Uh, I think it, it, it resonated with a few of them at least and you can kind of tell by the way that they talked and the way that they stood there. But then you can see that it, it angered some of them and that's when the ones that were smirking or sneering, uh, one of them turned to his buddy and said, him right there. And that's when I said, yeah, me, right here. That's, I'm, I'm right here. And then they lunged out and tried to grab me. Well, they did, they got a good hold on me, yanked me back, and uh, there's not enough of us at this point. So they yanked me back, yanked my buddy back, yanked a couple of us back. And when they got a hold of me and Four or five of them, maybe more, all had a part of me, and I couldn't move. That's when two of them just started punching me immediately. I wasn't resisting. I was trying to keep my balance. I would never swung, never kicked, never did anything, just tried to remain on my feet. And um, they piled on me, drove me to the ground, uh, kicked, punched, um, lots of kicking in the side. Lots of arms twisting out. I had my arm twisted to the side and it was being stepped on. Um, and that to them was resisting. I couldn't move it and they said, put your arm behind your back. I said, I can't, you're standing on it, you're stepping on it. He's stepping on it. And because I did not put my arm behind my back or I couldn't put my arm behind my back, they began kicking me in the face. That's where I got all this. They, uh, the sides of my head is Probably going to be very bruised tomorrow. Um, got kicked in the face a lot. And I was trying to dodge him. I was trying to go like this because that's the only thing I could move. And that's when one of them got down right on top of me and put his hands around my neck and started choking me. And that was, at that point, I don't know what happened. Uh, he must have came to his senses. He stopped choking me. I was able to get a breath. One of them yanked my mask down so that they could see my face. Got a deep breath, and um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Lots of kicking and kneeing and punching while I was down on the ground, just laying there, not able to move. Got zip-tied and stuffed into a uh, 
looked like a dog catcher's van, you know, lots of little slots for people to climb in and sit down. Um, yeah, that's that was pretty much it. That's about the story. We're on Tainanega territory, as far as I understand it. Now, because they have some sort of lease on those railroads, that means that the police can come in, according to them. But we were in Tainanega. We were on Mohawk territory. And this is all Mohawk territory. And so I witnessed Canadian armed officers, pretty close to militarized officers, coming in onto Mohawk territory and brutalizing people. I mean, that's just... A, I, I don't I don't see myself as a victim. I see myself as doing my duty, upholding my responsibility. But that's the plain truth of it. They came and they brutalized people and treated people like animals. Simple as that. I love my people. I love all of my people. I love the land. And I have a... Instilled by my mother and my grandmother, I have a strong sense of responsibility. And so I leave my job. I leave my family for days at a time to come here to do where I to uphold my responsibilities to defend my people and defend my land. Our laws, our traditions were here before Canadian laws and Canadian government. And there's very few people that have that really mean it when they say they want European descendants and settlers out. There's a minority. Most of us are fine as long as they can learn to live in harmony with us, to live in peace with us and respect our laws and our traditions. Laws and traditions that are protected and explicitly stated in the Canadian Constitution that their government is forced, is agrees to abide by. And so what we do is not unlawful. It's not illegal. It's none of those things. In fact, if anyone has any sort of legal background, they could tell you that. There's nothing unlawful about it. We are upholding our rights, which are backed up by Canadian laws. And that, that doesn't, it doesn't, our opposition to these things does not have to be at the expense of Canadians in any way, shape, or form. Mm -hmm. They see the inconveniences, but if the Canadian government would just listen, then those inconveniences would disappear. They put the, the burden on us to, to, to stop because you're hurting people. And it's like, you stopped so that we don't have to do anything, so that we don't have to protect ourselves and our land. I think that the biggest thing, the biggest thing that I would want Canadians to understand is that our opposition to a government that doesn't even care about them does not have to be at their expense. I very, very strongly disagree with the label as a warrior. I think there is no path of a warrior if you're being realistic with yourself. I think that we're just men. We're just men who have responsibilities and those responsibilities take us to many places. Whether that's helping an elder, that's helping someone that you know, someone that you love, whether that's working, taking care of kids, nephews, your own. It doesn't matter what it is. And if that, when it comes to it, to defend the land in whatever way your people decide is the right way. So there is no path of the warrior. There is just upholding all of your responsibilities to the best of your ability. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that may look warrior-like to some people, mm -hmm. but I think that that's a oversimplification. Yeah, that's what people... I would just say that if everyone watching just took a little bit more responsibility, just a little bit more, and a little bit more compassion. Nobody, I don't, I don't ever ask anyone to bite off more than they can chew or anything that's unfair, but just take on a little more responsibility for your people, for the land, and have a little bit more compassion and a little bit more understanding. Just a little bit. And maybe that'll be enough to propel you forward into a, a more loving and fulfilled life.